1 Corinthians 15, 33 cautions us, do not be deceived, bad company ruins good morals. In this verse, Paul was warning of the spiritual dangers of associating with those who are out of sync with God. It's human nature that we all want to belong, from the kid who eats alone at school to the millions of people who are on Facebook and social media. Everyone wants to have friends and a sense of belonging. That being said, God's Word gives us specific instructions and warnings about the people that we associate with. Proverbs 18.24 says, One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Proverbs 22.24 Do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered. Proverbs 16.28 a perverse person serves a conflict, and a gossip separates close friends. James 4.4 4. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. In Romans 16, 17, 18. Now I urge you, brethren, keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you learned, and turn away from them. For such men are slaves, not of our Lord Jesus Christ, but of their own appetites. And by their smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. I want you to stop and think for a moment about the five people you spend the most time with. What are they like? Are they strong Christians completely devoted to following God? Are they lukewarm or maybe not a Christian at all? Do any of these friendships persuade you to enjoy worldly pleasures? Do they have strong godly marriages and encourage you to do the same? How are they raising their children? Are they loving parents who work hard to raise their children in the faith and the importance of following Christ? Do they hinder your relationship with God? Just what are these people like and how are they influencing you? When our children were growing up, we had many conversations about their friends and what kind of influence they had on them. As I got older, I realized more and more that this applies to people of all ages. I have seen firsthand what happens when adults associate with people with no Christian values. Before long, they start to mimic their behavior, their language, and their habits. I have seen marriages fall apart, godly people fall away from church, and families destroyed, all because they chose to associate with the wrong people. You may think that these friendships and relationships are harmless, but over time, they can become toxic to your thoughts, your actions, and most importantly, your walk with God. Sin is deceitful, and it's easy to get sucked into it without even realizing it. You can't be who God called you to be and still keep all the same friends and habits. We need godly friends who will call, call us out on our sin, and we need to be that godly friend to others. The more you hang out with someone who doesn't share the same Christian values, the more likely you will be to give in to their actions that will more than likely go against God's word. Friendships shouldn't be connected by negativity, temptation, and wrongdoing. 2 Corinthians 6.14 tells us, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common, or what fellowship can light have with darkness? The Word tells us to withdraw from those who walk disorderly. Now that doesn't mean that we don't work to reach these lost people who need to find God. When Jesus came to earth in the flesh, he always went after the sinners and the outcasts for the purpose of salvation. The Holy Spirit gives us discernment to know who and what is of God and what is of the enemy, what is spiritual and what is of the flesh, and what is worldly and what is godly. So follow his direction. I am referring to the people you are closest with that are in your inner circle. Just as the Bible has given us caution and instruction on ungodly friendships, it has also given us a great set of instructions for healthy, Christ-centered friendships. Many times in God's Word, he reminds us that friends should be people that build each other up and bring out the best in us. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Proverbs 27, 9, A sweet friendship refreshes the soul. Proverbs 13, 20, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Proverbs 12, 26, The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. We have stopped to think about the types of people we spend the most time with, but now I want you to stop and think about yourself for a moment. Ask yourself, what kind of friend am I? Am I a negative or a positive influence? Am I being a light for Christ in this friendship or social media group? 
Am I sticking to my Christian beliefs? Do I speak to others with love? Do the people I associate with know that I'm a Christian by the way I speak and the way I act? God has not called his children to fit in, but to stand out. For those who have really entered into a true spirit-filled, fully surrendered walk with the Lord, where Holy Spirit is now leading your life, one of the first things you will find happening is that God will start to prune out the people that don't belong in your life and bring in the people that do belong. These people will be other godly, spirit-filled Christians who are walking in obedience with the Lord. Even though God is our very best friend and he is all we need, he desires for us to have personal relationships and fellowship with mankind. Fellowship and friendship among believers is so vital for our spiritual growth and maturity. We can get so much more accomplished for God's kingdom when we engage with other believers. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10 tells us, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. I want to share a short story of one of my friendships and how this verse stands true. I have a friend who confessed to me that when she first met me, she thought I was rich and snooty. I just laugh because number one, not rich, money-wise anyway, um, and definitely not snooty. Um, I had no idea that was her first impression of me until she told me down the road. The more we were around each other, the closer we continued to grow. She came to me one day and apologized for having those thoughts. My response to her was that Satan knew that we were both spirit-filled and that we would be a powerhouse for God when we got together. And sure enough, we are. He was planting those seeds in her mind to try and keep us apart because he knew that the two of us together would labor for God and be unstoppable. The truth is that we need our godly friends more today than ever before. We live in a world full of unsaved, ungodly people whose father is not the God that we serve. We need to fellowship with those that have God as their Heavenly Father and are living in obedience to Him. We need to be fellowshipping with like-minded believers in the faith, not friends of the world, but friends of faith, true God friends. Christian friends who are deeply rooted in Christ. Friends who will encourage us to choose what God desires over our own desires. Friends who will rejoice in our victories and weep with us in our losses. Friends that will pray for us as we pray for them. Friends who speak truth into our life, Help us when we fall. Encourage us to stay the course, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Friends who will not hinder our relationship with God. Friendships that are truly built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Jesus taught us some great qualities of friendship through his disciples. He went from being their master and teacher to being their friend. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. John 15, 15. Jesus showed kindness to his disciples. He protected them in the storms. He healed them and their family members. He mourned with them in hard times and celebrated with them in good times. He was also patient with his disciples. There were times they didn't understand his teachings, and he patiently explained further. There were times when they couldn't do what he asked, and he patiently waited for them. There were times they misunderstood, but Jesus was patient. He also encouraged them. The night before his death, knowing he was facing crucifixion, Jesus encouraged his disciples. He was also a good listener. He stopped to listen even when he was in a rush to get somewhere. He listened even when his enemies were attacking him. He modeled what it looked like to be a good listener. In John 11:35, it tells us that Jesus wept. He knew how to feel the hurt and pain of others. He was compassionate. He also taught his disciples to forgive everyone, including their enemies. He modeled forgiveness when he asked God to forgive those who were crucifying him. A good friend knows how to forgive. These are just a few of the character traits of good friends that we find in the life of Jesus that we should be mirroring in our own friendships. In closing tonight, I want to say it's absolutely essential for our Christian growth and also glorifies God when two friends are strengthening each other. Godly friendships should be about loving each other, looking out for each other, and striving to bring out the best in each other. The same way Christ loves us, looks out for us, and strives to bring out the best in us. True friends aren't the people that help you have fun and be worldly. True friends are the ones that stick by your side and help your faith grow stronger in Christ. I pray that you will seek God's wisdom to make sure your friendships are staying in alignment with God's word, and that you will make the most of every opportunity to live as one set apart for God. Time spent with the Lord, family, and friends is priceless and a true blessing from God. 
Ask God today to help you to establish wonderful Christ-centered relationships and friendships that will help you to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus so that you will not be led astray, led into, led into temptation, or led off track. I also want to encourage you to evaluate your social media groups and delete any of them that may be unhealthy for you, especially if they are hindering your walk with God. God bless you all. Glory.